Welcome everyone to my channel. My name is Andal and I'm an author and storyteller. Today's original story is the first chapter of Ember the Swallowtail Butterfly. Not available for purchase yet, but I thought I'd give you a preview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who might love this content. I post stories weekly, so stay tuned. Please feel free to comment me and leave your suggestions down below to improve this story. So grab a glass of milk and your favorite cookie and sit back and relax and enjoy this tale. Chapter 1. The Child A glistening night sword penetrated through the supple leather covering of the carriage, finding its mark in Ember's right arm. Blood began to trickle down, tracing a macabre path down her sleeve. With swift determination, her mother tore a strip from her cloak, fashioning a makeshift bandage to staunch the flow. Ember, wincing in pain, cried out to her mother. She seized a child's wooden sword to retaliate against the unseen intruder. In her fervor, Ember swung wildly, inadvertently propelling herself and the wooden sword off her bed. Her plunk. Oi! Ember landed ungracefully on the rickety floor, beads of perspiration streaming down her arms and neck. She grasped her arm, still ensnared in the delirium of the dream, and checked for signs of blood. She tried to erase the spectral memory of a deep branded scar that whispered of abandonment. Reality snapped back into focus as Ember, wrapped in a sheepskin, staggered to her feet. A surreal stillness clung to her, the residue of a dream that bridged the chasm between reality and haunting memory. The week had unfurled like a darkened saga, unleashing upon Ember a relentless onslaught of nightmares, a menacing occurrence that clung to her consciousness, refusing to be relegated to the forgotten corners of her thoughts. This tumultuous journey into the depths of her fears culminated in a single, harrowing night, a night that thrust her into a world where shadows whispered of abandonment and echoes of despair reverberated through the ancient boughs of Emerald Forest. For eight long years, Ember had borne the weight of forsaken existence, her sanctuary a tree house amidst the heart of the Emerald Wilderness. She abided with her guardians, a moody teenage brother, his emotions as turbulent as the forest winds, and a young maidservant whose nurturing essence provided a fragile thread of solace in the tapestry of Ember's tumultuous life. While in the safety of the beautiful haven, Ember's heart remained shackled by the unanswered questions that danced like shadows in the moonlight. The fate of her parents, shrouded in uncertainty, cast a haunting pall over her shoulder. Were they safe, or had they perished, leaving no trace for Ember to follow? The perennial mystery clawed at her thoughts, a relentless whisper in the rustle of leaves and the murmur of unseen streams. Ember ambled to her feet, wrapping her sheepskin tighter around her. She stepped toward her window with a ghostly grace, traversing the time-worn planks that supported her clandestine abode. The open window called to her, a portal to the world beyond, inviting the fragrant essence of morning dew and pine into her sanctuary. She fixed her gaze upon the aspen trees and ancient oaks that adorned the forest. The leaves, like shimmering embers, told tales of forgotten dreams and uncharted destinies. Amid this idyllic scene, daydreaming seized her, a fleeting vision that danced on the fringes of her consciousness. Abruptly, the vision shattered as Ember became conscious of the waking world and closed the window. A symphony of creaking hinges and the metallic click of a lock echoed through the room, a silent plea to conceal the remnants of a loud mishap that had unfolded in the break of dawn. She turned around, smoothing the wrinkles in her nightgown. Evelyn just made this dress a week ago, and it's already becoming wrinkled, she thought to herself with a sigh as she hurried to her closet. The selection was small due to the limits of living under cover as a village peasant. Although, this morning, simplicity brought her a smile as she thought of her maidservant who had handmade all five gowns, all the tedious work that had gone into sewing that fabric together with care. Ember selected a blue and white gown, meticulously brushed her golden locks, and adorned her hair with a cloth headband, an emblem of the villagers in Celadonia. 
She descended the elaborate staircase just outside her bedroom chamber and encountered Evelyn diligently stirring oatmeal over a primitive fire. At the age of twenty-six, Evelyn possessed a beauty that seemed incongruent with the role of a mere maid. Her chestnut curls framed a countenance adorned with dazzling eyes and fair skin, an ensemble that exuded an air of elegance and sophistication. Clad in a modest yellow and white dress, complemented by a full white apron, Evelyn's appearance belied her humble station. Beneath the veneer of physical grace, Evelyn radiated compassion and selflessness. Her kindness transcended the mundane duties of a maidservant, manifesting as a profound commitment to fulfilling Ember and her brother's every wish. Her disposition, marked by a rare figure of beauty, grace, and genuine kindness, rendered her a figure of not just servitude, but benevolence in Ember's tumultuous world. Another nightmare, she asked, glancing over her shoulder when Ember approached. How did you know? Ember asked inquisitively, fidgeting with her fingers. The floor seems to be your wake-up call lately. Ember smiled nervously. Ugh, is it that obvious? Evelyn, in a moment of contemplation, emitted a soft sigh as she skillfully poured the warm oatmeal into a porcelain bowl, using a gentle motion of her ladle. With a tender touch, she brushed a wisp of her chestnut hair behind her ear, a gesture reflective of her quiet thoughtfulness. Try this, the maid gently summoned Ember to come forward. Ember obliged, allowing Evelyn to bring the ladle of oatmeal to Ember's lips. It was warm and gooey, with indescribable bursting flavors. It brought Ember the most satisfying solace after the reoccurring nightmare. How was it? Evelyn asked, as Ember savored the warm porridge in her mouth. Ember nodded. Mmm, delicious. Did you add cinnamon and golden raisins? Evelyn sighed happily. Yes, you just missed Annalise. She dropped by and brought golden raisins and cinnamon from Basil's Market. She asked if you were over your cold, and I said you were feeling much better. How sweet of her, Ember beamed. I love it when Annalise visits. She's the only visitor we get. Oh, and also your new shoes are ready. Annalise will deliver them from Leighton's cobbler shop to you by next week. Could you grab those two bowls over there for me to fill? Yes, certainly, Ember obliged. Once both bowls were filled, they sat down on stumps and began eating. Ember took small and simple bites, savoring the warm porridge on her tongue. Evelyn gave a long exhale and dropped her spoon into her bowl. Ember, is it the same dream? Ember nodded and stared down at her breakfast bowl. Yes, I can't get it out of my mind. You must miss your parents greatly, Evelyn said empathetically. She wrapped an arm around her. Ember looked up solemnly. Ember, your father and mother love you so dearly. Evelyn tried to comfort her. We'll hope for the best. One day we might not expect it, but they just might be rescued. I just wish none of that had ever happened, Ember said in almost a whisper. Think of how far we could have come in our lives, and what our kingdom would be like. My brother would be king. Mother and father would be teaching me so I could learn to become a true ruling princess. Everyone would feel loved, and the kingdom would all be together again. If only. She trailed off for a moment, unsure how to continue. She stared up at the branches of the aspens. The colorful yellow leaves swayed back and forth in the wind. If only we had a savior to end us from this hopeless situation, Ember finished. She stood up and reached for her maid's bowl. One day, Ember, I know it. When the divine kingdom falls and it is in shambles, it always rises again, like a phoenix from ashes, a new bird that is brighter than it was before. Some will come. I know it. Ember nodded and took the dishes, setting them off to the side for a moment. I wonder how long. I don't mean to be impatient at all, but I'm just worried. Would anyone care to notice that something needs to be done about the abandoned kingdom? Also, the rulers that have disappeared for almost a decade. I know someone will care. Someone will want the best for the kingdom again, no matter how long it's been. Thank you, Evelyn, for that. And the oatmeal. I'm just grateful that you have a loving heart, especially towards my brother when, well, you know, he's being a jerk. Evelyn gave an exasperated sigh. It's okay. You can admit it to me. I can't teach him anything. He rejects learning important subjects like etiquette. I can't even help him to be amiable to others. He doesn't even have any friends. He always comes home in a bad mood. I worry about him every day. If he decides to be a jerk all his life, how is he going to get married and have a family?
Emmer sighed and hugged her knees into her chest. Ever since the incident eight years ago, her brother Zen had become cold-hearted. He was stingy and always pestered his sister. He never seemed to warm up to Evelyn's soft words. He never laughed, nor did it seem he ever cried. Just the glimpse of him made Ember's and Evelyn's stomachs churn, as they expected the worst out of him soon. Though he acted so cold, she wondered if there was still a heart in him. He had been so kind to her when they were little. He wasn't just any friend, but her faithful friend. Could he just be suffering, she used to wonder, or is he so tyrant that he just wants to ignore it? She missed him dearly, just as much as she missed her parents. All she wanted was the best for him, but it was hard to give it that to him because of how he was now. All she ever wanted was for him and her parents to come back again. Amber sat there in a moment of silence as she thought of it pensively. If only my family was whole again, she thought to herself. She leaped to her feet. Amber couldn't waste her time. Chores awaited Amber. Tasks involving washing clothes in the river and gathering the last raspberries of late summer for the scones she and Evelyn would make. Anticipation filled her thoughts, especially for the delectable scones Evelyn crafted soft with a slight crispness, warm and juicy berries creating a delightful combination. Amber considered it a welcome diversion from her burdensome chores. Taking both her and Evelyn's bowls, Amber swiftly placed them in the basket designated for Evelyn's afternoon washing. I'll go wash the laundry for you, Amber told her, grasping the basket of clothes. How many berries do you want me to grab when I get back, though? A few handfuls, Evelyn told her. You can just fill up the whole basket. That would be enough. Are you sure you can do the laundry by yourself? I can always help you. Amber shook her head. She had done this duty many times on her own. It's not too much. You already have enough on your hands. All right. Thank you, Amber. You've been so helpful, Evelyn told her. She beamed and nodded. See you in a little bit. I'm just going to tidy up your brother's room, she sighed, shaking her head as she mumbled under her breath about how untidy it was. Amber held the basket under one arm and picked up her skirt with the other hand. Amber strolled towards the river. The soothing ambience of the forest eased her. Emerald Forest had always been a comfort to her on the hardest days. She let her f herself fall into daydreaming, gazing up at the blue sky peeking through the leaves. Autumn was apparent in the air. Chickadees chirped in the morning, and the soft wind carried the scents of pumpkin and apple goods from miles away. Arriving at the river, Ember eagerly sat by the bubbling water, finding relief for her heated skin. Despite only being three of them, there was much to get done for their survival. Ember and Evelyn stayed at home to fix up the house, prepare the food, and wash the laundry. On the other hand, Zen, who rejected getting his hands into that kind of work, decided to work at a carpenter shop in Lilac Fields Village to make money. Laundry progressed quickly, and Ember soon found herself hanging clothes before embarking on her quest to search for raspberries. Unfortunately, the bushes of raspberries weren't the closest. Ember had to walk a half a mile to be able to find one, especially one that was ripe enough. But she didn't mind. Her forest began to be like home for her, and wherever she went, she didn't feel too far from her comfort zone, especially at fall time. She couldn't help but feel the air soften. It felt magical. Also that satisfying crunch of piles of leaves under her feet as she walked. Often she would find herself lost in thought or spending hours out here and losing track of her daily chores. Nature had a strong, rounded connection, like a mother's love for her precious children. Whenever her nightmares haunted her in the morning, she would go here for peace and to feel safe for once in a dangerous world. With a basket in one hand and her hand gripping her dress, Ember deepened her search. Feeling weary, she decided to take a seat against an oak tree, contemplating possible locations for ripe berries. I'm sure they're ripe this time of year, she thought to herself. Amber glanced around herself and decided to take a few wild strawberries she happened to find. It was almost noon and the sun was blazing intensely. She leaned her back up against an oak as she hugged her knees into her chest. She looked upon her empty basket, as empty as her stomach was then. It would take her a while to make her way back to the treehouse and tell Evelyn the unsuccessful news. She, and especially her brother, had hope for them. I'll just take a moment to rest, and then I'll turn back. Amber closed her eyes for a moment and breathed in the silence. She was about to lean her head against the trunk of the tree when the oak itself began to quiver. Her eyes fluttered open. That's funny. She hopped to her feet and inspected the tree. The oak no longer shook. 
and curiosity, she climbed onto a low branch to see if she could find what had caused the shaking. She thought it would be wonderful to spot a magpie hiding inside the tree's cover. She'd always wanted to get a close view of one of those birds. As a girl living in nature, climbing a tree was nothing out of her skill. She liked climbing trees ever since she was little, showing off her skills in front of her cautious brother, who was dreadfully afraid of heights. A shrieking cry suddenly split the peaceful silence of the forest. Startled, Amber almost slipped off the branch she stood upon. She regained her balance by grabbing hold of a branch near her chest. She was afraid to go any further. What was up there in the canopy of that massive tree? It sounded like some sort of wounded animal or terrified child. Has an animal been hurt? Is it just a bird? An unusual animal I don't know of? She took a deep breath and continued to ascend the tree. The autumn leaves of the tree were getting more vibrant the further she climbed. The air was crisper from a height, and it felt cool against her skin. A branch snapped above her, and Ember swiftly moved out of the way just in time before it collapsed upon her. Glancing up, she noticed a small, plump figure sitting on a branch not too far above. It whimpered as it stared down at Ember with dark little round eyes. A child! Her eyes widened. Her heart pounded fiercely inside her, making her ribcage feel as if it would burst within seconds. Hello, I'm Ember, Ember gently told the child. What's your name? The child didn't respond. Instead, it panicked. It began climbing further up the tree on the opposite end. Oh no, I didn't mean to frighten you, Ember called up to the child. I just... Another branch snapped. The child screamed in horror and fell a few feet, entangled in thick vines. The young one was hanging dangerously twenty feet off the ground. Amber, now on the other side of the tree, could see the little girl with a curly mass of chestnut hair and eyes of the deepest and most intriguing blue Amber had ever seen. The little girl wiggled wildly, shaking the oak. Amber panicked. Hold on, I'm coming, she cried to the desperate child. She climbed across and hurried over to where the child was swinging loosely upside down. Even more shocked, the girl yelled at the top of her lungs. The child's fiery disposition flickered in her eyes. Don't you dare hurt me! I am a trained knight! I will fight you and I'll... I'll... Unable to find the right words, she slipped further down. Ember climbed up into the concealed protection of the leaves, seating herself on a branch near the terrified child. The little girl, hyperventilating, was placed upright next to Ember, pulling out a pocket knife as a defense measure. Ember worked on cutting the vines contrasting. Pulling out a pocket knife as a defense measure, Ember worked on cutting the vines and tangling the girl. After losing her parents, she had always felt the need to carry some sort of small weapon with her. The child's eyes widened. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? She exclaimed. Shh! Hold still. I'm going to get you free. The massive vines began to loosen, and Ember freed the girl. The child wrapped her arms around Ember, sobbing into her shoulder. Thank you, she whispered hoarsely, wetting Ember's sleeve with tears. Ember blinked, shocked at the child's response. The innocent and heartbroken soul of the little girl panged Ember's heart to the core. Memories of being a child once again flashed through her mind. She remembered days when her servants dressed her beautifully in luxurious gowns, those days when she and her brother would sit at the dinner table and tell each other jokes, or when her mother would take her on nature walks and her father would teach her archery in the courtyard. She was so happy then, free as ever, until the incident. She blinked back tears, trying to push away the pain of the past. Come on, let's get you down. Amber secured her arm firmly around the girl and reached for a vine. She tugged at it, checking its strength, and stood before, uh, slipping down to the floor's floor. Right when the girl's feet touched the ground, the child backed away from Amber timidly. You sure you didn't rescue me just to kidnap me and bring me back to an evil household? She cautiously asked. Or use me for your benefit? I hope you're not getting any clever and deceitful ideas. Why would I? Amber shrugged humbly. I rescued you for the sole purpose of you not getting hurt. The little girl inched timidly toward Ember. Suddenly, her expression tensed, and she looked straight up at the oak. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! She yelped. Bella! Where's Bella? Ember looked over at the tree, quite baffled. Bella? Had she not seen if there was anyone else in the tree? Was it a friend of the child to been stuck also? Bella? Who's Bella? The girl put her hands on her pale white cheeks. 
She's my fluffy pet rat. She's so cute. In fact, she's the cutest rat I've ever seen in my life. Other rats look like they have been shaped, but Belle is quite the opposite. She's furry and white as snow. She doesn't look a bit ugly. Oh no, she always comes with me. She never tries to leave my side. It happened to be that the fluffy rat that the girl had described began to scurry down the base of the tree, this displaying impressive climbing skills. The rat sat in front of the girls. The creature looked back and forth between the two, eyes wide. Excited, the creature ran round in circles. Oh, <laughs> it's only a chinchilla. Ember happened to find Bella quite amusing. Chinchillas are much cuter than rats. The girl burst into tears as she saw her pet. Oh, Bella! I'm so glad you're all right, the child cried, dashing up to the chinchilla and scooping Bella into her arms. She happened to squeeze her pet a little too tight, evident from the odd expression on his face. Oh, Bella, 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 I love you so much. You're the, such the sweetest little fluff ball I've ever met. She kissed the top of her head. One of the chinchilla's eyes twitched. Are you sure the chinchilla adores you too? Ember asked, staring the chinchilla. I think Bella's a little squished by her extreme love for it. Oh, I bet she does, the girl told Ember. She stroked the pet softly. The child began rocking the creature back and forth like it was her own child. The chinchilla nervously curled up tighter. To answer your question, Femme, when we were in the tree, my name is Isla. The child rubbed her arms. My mother thought of it to be one of the prettiest names for me, but to others, I feel like everyone else has a different opinion about it. I like it, Ember told her. I've never heard of it before. Your mother must love unique names, Lila nodded. She must have. I wish I'd remember her more. I I was separated from her when I was very young and forced to live with my aunt, two years old, when my mother had me last. Ember stepped closer, realizing they shared a similar plight. You're just like me, Ember said. My mother was taken away from me, too. Now I only live in the, in the forest with a maid of mine and my brother. I haven't seen my mother for eight years after she vanished. I didn't realize... Lila shifted uncomfortably. I'm sorry that you had the chance to see her and was more heartbroken when you found her missing. Wait, but what do you mean that you're living with your maid? Usually a maid is for... Ember shifted uncomfortably. Well, the thing is, Lila, I'm a princess, a lost princess. The, the girl was speechless. She couldn't say a word as she stared at Ember like she had been struck by lightning. You're truly a princess? Ember nodded. Yes, exactly. And since you're meeting a trained knight in person, do you want to see my nice skills? Lila winked at her chinchilla to start. Together, they performed somersaults in the air and pretended to lunge forward, fighting an invisible army surrounding them. They executed roundhouse kicks, backflips, and various tricks that amazed Emperor, who never knew a child, or a chinchilla, could be capable of such spectacular skills. At the end of their performance, Emperor gave a round of applause. Wow. That was incredible. How did you do that? How were you able to teach your chinchilla such spectacular skills? Well, I... Lala was about to say when her stomach grumbled in agony. Are you hungry? Ember asked. I just know what to give you. My maid and I are making scones. If you like, you can join us for our dessert and also lunch. Scones? Lala's face began to light up. I've never heard of such a thing in my entire life. But I'm dying to find out. Don't spoil it to me. I think it's better to experience it for myself. She has hesitantly linked arms with Ember. Can you take me there? Ember nodded. First, we have to find some raspberries. They can be hard ones to find. Are you sure those aren't raspberries over there? Lila pointed to a bush near the oak tree the child had been rescued from. And just as the girl expected, fresh, ripe raspberries were waiting to be picked. Perfect, Ember blinked, astonished. You have a good eye. Lila shrugged. I noticed them when I was in the tree this morning. I wanted to get them because I felt so... Her stomach interrupted her, rumbling in pain once again. The girl looked a bit tired and looked as if she had walked miles from home. How long have you gone without food? Ember questioned. The child smiled nervously. Um, two days at least? I haven't found anything besides the raspberries. Oh dear, that's no good news. Let's quickly pick some ger berries and get you to my tree house. Your tree house? Lila cocked her head. What's that? I'll explain later. Come, we need to get you some lunch. You've been starving yourself. Ember filled her basket with the berries and gave a few of them to Lila to eat along the way as they traveled back. The chinchilla, also starving, snuck a few berries from Lila's hand. 
The two girls didn't talk much as they went along. Lila was troubled the whole time they headed back. Everything surrounding the chapel puzzled her, and Ember tried to be of comfort. When the girl was near the brink of shrieking in terror, Ember grasped Lila's arm, arm firmly to indicate that the little girl would be safe. Ember herself had experienced fear the first night she had spent in the forest. With no parents to cuddle up to her side, she was lonely and became very afraid. She had been a brave girl before when she was very young, so brave she could do more than what her brother would have ever, would ever had the guts to. But being raised without mother, her whole life had flipped and shattered into millions of pieces. She wasn't the same person she was before. Ember was less cheerful and bright that she had she had been because of how miserable she was her spirit felt as if it were dying inside of her she had smiled a few times but nothing had brought her to laugh again nothing had brought her to cry. tears of joy nothing had made her feel truly loved only empty and meaningless what was the point of her life when her powerful mother and father weren't there at her side she was weak without them in fact her strength was compared to the might of a skittish mouse she often wondered why she was sent here into this world when she didn't seem to have a purpose. Nothing had called her to save the kingdom or bring back her parents. Nothing had called her to step out of her comfort zone, stepping forward into the unknown. All she knew was that she was an ordinary girl, as ordinary as a villager. And of course her parents loved her dearly, though she wasn't that special. When my parents come back, she told herself on nights she was alone, they'll help to return my strength. They'll come back for me, won't they? They couldn't possibly leave me and forget about me, right? As the years passed, a haunting thought gnawed at Ember. What if her family had forgotten her? Could that be the reason for their prolonged absence? Her mind mulled over the possibility, considering the potential weight of their grief of being held captive, preventing them from returning to her. Lila, sensing Ember's contemplative mood, observed the despondency etched on her face. "'Are you okay, Ember?' she asked. Ember sighed. "'I'm just thinking about my life now and my parents. It's miserable and, miserable and, well, unfair. Life indeed presents many challenges. But let's focus on the positive. You're a princess, Ember, one of the most special individuals in the world.' Ember, however, portrayed her feelings of powerlessness with, with a nervous wringing of her hands. I don't really feel special. I'm as powerless as you are, my little huffs. But a princess is always special. They embark on exciting adventures, acquire vast knowledge, and unravel their destiny. Eventually, they go into queens, contributing to the prosperity of their people and nation. In the end, everyone's happy, right? and remained uncertain, voicing her reservations about assuming the daunting role of a queen in training. I'm supposed to be queen in training at, at least two or three years. I should be learning everything from etiquette to mathematics and everything a leader needs to know. I just don't feel like I'm capable of such a giant task. Besides, my brother's the oldest, so he'll likely inherit the kingdom anyways. Lila beamed. I don't think you need to know everything. I think your character already proves that there is potential for royal growth. Ember laughed at her words, smiling at Lila's joyful spirits. Lila skipped along, becoming more accustomed to the environment around her. She was bright and cheerful. Her spirits were raised with optimism as she marveled at the beauty of the forest. Ember smiled as they reached the treehouse. Lila Maze began to explore the place before Ember could say one word about lunch. Evelyn was surprised by the new visitor and asked Ember about the girl. Ember shrugged. I don't know where she came from. She was all alone with that chinchilla of hers. She must have run away from her home because of her aunt. Evelyn sighed. I bet they would worry about her if they find that she's disappeared. She can stay with us for lunch. After that, we might have to figure out what to do next. Preparing the meal for the three of them, Ember happened to find Lila squealing over the treehouse. Her chinchilla wriggled out of the child's hold and scrambled up the staircase and into Ember's room. Bella, wait for me, Lila cried, chasing after the chinchilla. Ember followed after Lila just to see what the girl would be up to next. She found Lila exploring Ember's room, laughing and bright with curiosity. I never knew it, Lila cried, turning to see Ember in the doorway. I never knew you could live in a tree. What I mean is, I've never seen one in my entire life. I feel like I don't know too much about this about the world. I've just been stuck in a cottage with my aunt. 
Anyways, whose room is this? My chinchilla happened to wander in here for some reason. Ember sat down on the floor. It's mine. I the marveled at the light coming into Ember's room and all the sentimental trinkets she acquired while visiting the treehouse over the years. I bet you're so lucky. This is even better than living in a house on the ground. Ember chuckled at the little girl's words, but said nothing in reply. She watched as the little girl explored everything from the small closet, even a trunk of Ember's old childhood dresses. You keep so many things. I barely have anything interesting possessions of my own. I just have boring, worn-out clothes and a chinchilla. That's about it. Didn't your aunt know how to dress you? Ember asked as Lila wandered over to the window. Lila rubbed a smudge of dust off the glass. She doesn't know how to properly raise a child. All she knows is to scold me for everything I do wrong and make the worst soup ever. Lila plopped down on the floor and sniffled, wiping tears away from her eyes. But even though I feel so much better away from my aunt, I'm so scared right now. I'm lost far away from home. My aunt would be so mad at me when I get back. I would hate to be punished greatly. I just wanted to see the world. That's all. But now I realize it's far bigger than I imagined. Ember thought deeply about Lila's words as she wrapped an arm around the child. What was she supposed to do now? Were they to keep the girl? It sounded like Lila's aunt was cruel and nasty. Or were they to give Lila back to her aunt? She wasn't quite sure. But all she could do was be empathetic toward the little girl whose life was unfortunate. Ember, Lila, and Evelyn all talked about it over lunch. They tried to stay upbeat, but resolving the problem weighed he heavily on their shoulders. Even for the chinchilla, though she may have not known, have known nothing as she stuffed pieces of scone in her mouth. I'm not quite sure what to do next, Evelyn said. Her aunt may worry about her, no matter how harshly she treated Lila. Does Lila have any other relatives or family? Do you know exactly where you live with your aunt? Lila shrugged. No one that I know of. It's just my aunt and me. Nor do I know where exactly I live. I just lived in a place with evergreen trees somewhere very far from here. I'm not joking. I traveled far. Lila shifted uneasily and rubbed her arms. How did you get away then? Evelyn asked, inquisitive. Lila lit up. Well, I have a story to tell. She cleared her throat as if reading them a storybook. It was dinner time. My aunt was setting the table when I noticed Bella sneak into the cottage. I'd forgotten to close the door after I played. <laughs> and she managed to get inside. Then she sprinkled some breadcrumbs on my aunt's dinner plate. Once my aunt had taken a bite of her meal, she started hiccuping and gagging. Also, she was getting red rashes all over her arms, even her face. She chugged down a glass of water but couldn't resolve her rashes and gagging. I said to her, you don't look so well, aunt. And she said back to me, Be quiet, child. Leave me alone. I'm going to bed early tonight. Sing yourself to sleep without me. After she had left the table, Bella instructed me to grab my satchel and hurried me out of the cottage. We've been traveling ever since. And I have no clue if this is the destination we've been trying to arrive at. But that's my story. It was a crazy one. How about you stay with us for a little while then? Ember suggested. After your crazy adventure, you might as well rest a while until we figure out what to do next. Evelyn nodded. For now. Ember and I will give you our hospitality. You can share Ember's room to sleep in and play with her. It might be good to keep you. After all, Ember often feels quite lonely around here. Lila turned to Ember. Her round eyes looked wet with tears. Oh, poor Ember, she said sympathetically. The girl wrapped her arms around Ember. I'll be your dedicated friend. Ember was almost in tears also. She never thought of the day someone bright would show up to her treehouse to be her best friend. She had longed to see someone else, even if she loved her alone time. Something about the little girl felt right. It was a warm feeling about it, like someone nudge was nudging her to meet the girl further. She didn't know what it exactly was. All she knew was that her life wouldn't be so lonely now. Ember and Lila spent the whole day with each other. Ember showed Lila around the forest, showing her to places Ember treasured most. Lila couldn't stop exploring Ember's room because it was fascinating to the little girl. Evelyn and Ember spent their e effort, which they should have spent on their chores, to make Lila feel comfortable at home. They helped her wash her face, do her hair, and give her something to wear rather than dirty rags. As the day went by, Ember stopped counting the hours and minutes 
like she did when there wasn't much to do. The girls picked flowers, ate berries, told each other stories, and hung out in Ember's room. Evelyn was pleased to hear Ember laugh again when the two girls were together. All day they were inseparable, like they had been good friends for years. Her work was done with a happy smile, and she could get more done while she heard Ember's spirits joyful. Near the end of the day, when the sun was starting to set, the two girls stood by the window to watch the view. So many colors, Violet exclaimed. I know, I love it too, Ember told Lila. In spring, my mother used to take me to the courtyard many times, and we'd watch the sunset in the sky. I don't have many things that remind me of my mother, but the sunset is always a big one. She used to tell me that I was a beautiful sunrise that never had to set. She told me always to stay beautiful on the inside, to be kind and do my best continually. That's why I always look up at the sky at night. I know she's so far away from me, and I can't reach her, but it's good to be reminded and just imagine her love for me. I'm glad she taught you to be the person you are, Lila said, because the good in you shines so brightly. Amber laughed. Thank you, Lila. It's good to hear uplifting things after a while of missing them. I always wished every day in the forest would be like this. Little did I know that would be fulfilled eight years later. Thanks for waiting, even if it took me eight years until I bumped into you. Lila giggled. She stood to her feet and stretched. I'll be back. I just need to check on Bella. I think she's sleeping in the treehouse. She's funny like that. Always takes naps constantly. At least she's not running away yet. She has before. But Lila could not move another step. She froze in place as she heard horse hooves approaching at a frantic pace, then followed by rhythmic boots pounding up the stairs. She was hyperventilating quietly, her breath heavy and uneven. Hey, Lila, are you okay? Ember noticed the child turning pale. Lila screamed out one last sentence. They found me! The door burst open as Lila started to fall backward. In bounded Ember's brother. Zen slid across the floor and enclosed her in his arms just before she hit the floor. He turned to Ember, perplexed. Ember, who's this? To be continued.